This week on Quad NB, we are moving in the Kent area. We will be talking about four great clubs. First, East Shore, then Ski Row, Ridge Riders, and United. Quad NB, stay with us. The New Brunswick All-Terrain Vehicle Federation's Region 5 is the largest in number for members, clubs, and directors. Two other clubs, Club Skiru and East Shore, are part of the region. The first one is mapped in the extreme northern part of Kent County and offers winter and summer trails where you can find many heritage treasures. The second club is between Rishabunto and the Bactouche Rivers. The region is well known for the Pays de la Saguin but its hundreds of kilometers of trails combine to offer many other legends. Both clubs are strong with more than 600 members. Welcome to Quad and B. My name is Jacques Wallet. Yes, Quad and B, the show that takes you right to the heart of New Brunswick. Uh, also, we make you discover all the ATV clubs in the province of New Brunswick that uh, are member of the New Brunswick All Terrain Vehicle Federation. I have with me the president of the board of directors. Roger Daigle. Roger, welcome to the show uh, once again. And yes, we are talking about uh, four clubs for now. That is Skiru, East Shore, Ridge Riders, and United. But for the first segment of the show, we will be talking about the first two clubs, Skiru and East Shore. Uh, what is to be said about, about those two clubs? Well, uh, Skiru is uh, the most northern club in Kent County, and they border with the park Cushibogwak. And Cliff Skiru uh, has many trails, but uh, mm. unfortunately, they have a lot of bogs that they have to get through. So they're, they're mostly winter trails, but they do have a lot of summer trails also where they use woods roads and stuff. But it's a, 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 a popular club. Uh, it's a big club, and they're a very active club. Mm. And uh, both of them count, I think it's somewhere around 630 members combined. Between United and East Shore, yeah, prob probably more, mm. uh, mm. but uh, in any case, and East Shore, and what happens with uh, uh, Skiru, they come down to uh, Rexton, and, uh, and they're blocked there by the uh, uh, Rishibaktu River. Okay. And uh, East Shore have many unique trails. Their trails are mostly built in the woods, and... Uh, they hardly don't use any woods road or dirt road, just a little section that they do use. And they are also blocked at the Rishabaktu River where they can't have access to uh, bridges to get across the river. And uh, East Shore stretches their trails way out to the Baktouche River, into Baktouche, and they're blocked there again. They need, they need access to a bridge to make it across the river. If they could, they could join up with the uh, Ridge Riders Club across the river. And if uh, they could get the permission from the uh, Rexton village, then they could tie with uh, Skiru across the river. So okay. yes, we need the help of municipalities for us to cross those rivers. They're uh, big, big uh, roadblocks. And this is an issue, for, I think, for all the clubs throughout the province. It is, it is. And we're trying to work with government to and the uh, towns and cities to give us access to those uh, places where we can go out and cross and uh, get into their town so we can use those facilities like restaurants, gas stations, and motels. And we absolutely need their help to do so. And like other clubs, I guess they have uh, yearly events that are really noticed that the people uh, like to participate to? Oh, absolutely. Uh, both Ishore and uh, Skiru, uh, they, uh, they bring on uh, what we call rallies. Other parts of the province, they uh, do poker runs where mm -hmm. it takes a lot of volunteers yeah. to hold a poker run. But in uh, our region, we use we do rallies where we get gifts from uh, uh, sponsors, sponsors, uh, and then uh, they come in, they register, and then at the end of the day, uh, we draw for prizes. And both Skiru and uh, you, uh, and uh, East Shore, sure. when they do whole rallies like that, they can bring anywhere from between from 200 to 300 wow. registration for one rally. So, and it's a big help for them because it gives them money to put back in the trails and mm. to service their groomers. And those events become, uh, it's, it's like uh, happening because it's, it's most of the people do them year after year. And it's, it's uh, friendship, it's 
fun, people uh, have fun, relax, and there's something special about those rallies. Yes, and we're starting to bring uh, people or tourists from outside the province at those rallies because they know they're going to meet a lot of people, mm -hmm. and most tourists, well, they're scared to get on our trails and get lost. This way here, if they come to a rally, they know that they're going to be following people that know where they're going. And we've been getting people coming from Quebec. PI, PI is big, coming That's to it. our rallies in Nova Scotia. That's it. And it's a new product for them also. It the, is. Those, uh, it is. Accesses. Absolutely. Because we're right in the proper time now. New Brunswick is. Uh, all the clubs in New Brunswick. Because in Quebec, they've had that uh, ETV uh, tourist sport for many years. And those people are getting tired to ride the same trail. So they want to come to New Brunswick. They, and we 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 welcome them with open arms discover a new product and exactly. that, that product is the trails so they are. Uh, as you mentioned the issues uh, with uh, with those two clubs is the access across the bridges and so the how we number 10 for them what's i guess is this the only well, challenge for them to to make the connection well I it's a big challenge because without those bri access to uh, those bridges they'll never have a a, a provincial trail number 10 uh, if they ever if they ever get access to cross those rivers, then it's wide open. We mm -hmm. can make it all the way south to uh, uh, Sackville. We can go all the way out to St. John I I if we wanted to. Really? But oh. we need to get across those rivers. Mm. And it's the same situation for many clubs because uh, uh, we have many rivers in New Brunswick. Absolutely, They're an attraction, yes. but, but also an obstacle for the clubs because what they need is the bridges. There are bridges over, over those rivers, but used by everybody. So Exactly, and uh, an ATV on a road is no worse than having a farm tractor driving down the road. We're no worse than a motorcycle or a moped. I mean, a moped, motorcycle is only this wide. Our ATVs are as big as cars, That's right. and uh, every ATV has to be plated, have, has to have insurance, so we are practically vehicles. All we, and we don't want all the streets and roads, we just want certain sections where we can tie from point A to point B and make it back in onto our trails. Where there's no other way to have access. Exactly, exactly, so where access is impossible to be had. Roger, this area here, the Kent area, tourism-wise, and mostly for the two clubs that we are talking about, um, what are the main tourism attractions? You, oh. Because you have many. Oh, we do, we do. In St. Louis, we have a golf course. We have a hotel in, uh, a motel in uh, Rishibaktu where uh, tourists can come, stay at the motel, visit the surrounding areas, and then ride in the, in the daytime and then relax at night. In Baktouche, we do also have a golf course and many attractions in Baktouche. We have the famous P. La Saguin, mm -hmm. the Irving Dunes, the o uh, Eco Center, and then we have a, a garden, a, a park, Irving... Uh, Arabium, it, Arbor, Arboretum, Ar I think. Ar Arboretum. I'm not sure, but I think it's it's, it's a nature Ar Arboretum. park. Arboretum. Yeah. It's a nature park where it, it, uh, they grow any, the trees. Yeah, they grow tree. Uh, there's a tree in, on in the park planted from every country ac ac around the world where they have a four season uh, access. Uh, uh, four season uh, seasons. Okay. So okay. the tree the tr uh, the tree is planted there. Uh, and it's marked and what country it comes from. It's a beautiful park. Okay. Access to lodging also? Lodging, uh, uh, yes, and uh, in uh, Baktouche we have the uh, Auberge Baktouche mm -hmm. uh, Inn and Suites. Which is very nice. Very nice and right next to the trail. Good, good. So uh, to invite the tourists uh, to come to uh, come visit your area, this area, uh, Ski Skirou and East Shore, what can we tell them? We still have two minutes. Sell them your pitch, Roger. <laughs> We have the most beautiful trails in New Brunswick. No, but we do. I mean, trails in the wood, many people enjoy that. They'd rather be in the woods than out on dirt roads and stuff. And Skiru and Eshore provide that. And that's what tourists uh, enjoy riding in yes. through the woods. What we will be repeating to those tourists, uh, potential visitors, potential customers for us uh, in New Brunswick is to tell them uh, you can ride along the shore, along the bay, you can ride some areas, you're five minutes from, from the complete wilderness. So this is, this, this is really a good product that people should come and visit. Exactly, and I invite them to come and enjoy them. And next year, bring your friends.
No, that's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, well, we see that more and more. We, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yes, we have uh, calls of people uh, that, that want to come to New Brunswick, and they come in. They come in summertime, and they also have snowmobiles, so they discover, they, they discover the area. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. If somebody comes in wintertime to snowmobile or to ATV, most of the time they wish to come back in summertime. So absolutely, that's, yes. That's a new product. It is. Um, Roger, um, as a president, uh, how do you see this? those two clubs? in let's say three years well in three years time i hope that the uh, the uh, town of rexton and the town of Bactouche, uh give us access to their uh, streets so we can cross those rivers and make it to those restaurants and uh, and motels and if we had that i mean you'd have uh, you'd have all the clubs from the south coming in into our towns into our cities and spending money and that's what we're all about that's giving it. a tourist product and helping out the businesses. Yes, uh, we will discuss once we come back from uh, from the break uh, about the two the two other clubs that are in the same area, the Kent uh, the Kent County. Uh, but uh, as a president, you're involved uh, since quite a while. How do you oversee that? What's what's happening? It's step by step. It's going through very slowly. But just to resume, well, it's it's. We like to call it one day at a time. Right. There's always surprises coming. Uh, just recently, we just got uh, uh, a tourist, uh, tourist New Brunswick has given us another uh, fund. We had a trust fund before, but now we got this other trust fund coming. Now this is going to be a big help for our clubs to uh, serve, to uh, buy new groomers, mm -hmm. fix their trails and build bridges. Bridges is the most, uh, really most costly. expensive yes. uh, item on our trails. I know that. <laughs> and, uh, the volunteers know that and the people yeah, involved on the, board of the, on the boards of directions really know that and it's really costly because just as an information, a thousand dollar, a thousand dollars a foot to build a bridge, Absolutely. line your foot, so it's really expensive. And it's all built by volunteers. Yeah. Roger, you stay with us? Okay, because we'll be back after this break for the two other clubs. Stay with us. Did you know the New Brunswick Department of Tourism conducted a survey in 2010-2011 with NBATVF trail permit holders and showed that the ATV tourism spending was estimated to produce a total gross sales volume of $7.2 million. The total economic impact of this ATV tourism visitor spending on the province's GDP was calculated at $2.5 million. This level of economic activity would sustain an estimated 54 full-time equivalent jobs. Here they are, the last of the 215 clubs of Region 5. The Ridge Riders ATV Club and the United ATV Club. The Ridge Riders ATV Club is situated in the southern part of the Bucktush River Valley and trails are mainly within the forest and low access on dirt roads. The Old Sugar Shack is currently one of their major tourist attractions and as for the United ATV Club, it is strengthened by the three groomers and drags for great winter riding. The four season ATV trails cross many rivers and streams combined with beaver dams that add a charm to the forest and access to many services. We're back to Quad and B. Yes, the TV show that takes you in the heart of New Brunswick uh, to uh, get you to discover ATV clubs and ATV industry throughout the New Brunswick. Um, I'm still with my guest, Roger, uh, Roger Degg, the president of uh, the, the, the New Brunswick All-Terrain Vehicle Federation, where we'll be talking about the clubs Ridge Riders and United. Roger, uh, let's start with the Ridge Riders. Uh, what can we expect as a club? Ridge Riders is a club that's uh, south of the Bactouche River, and they spend their trails into Saint Anthony, uh, Saint Antoine, yeah. and uh, Saint Antoine is part of uh, United. But in the uh, Ridge Riders Club, they have the Sugar Bush. It's a sh an old sugar camp that they turn into a very popular stopover for both snowmobiles and ATVs. And it's a real popular spot in the wintertime. So this, this gives us a good indication that the two can coexist. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. In the southern part of the province, uh, the uh, ATVs and the snowmobiles share trails. 
uh, it did, obviously because uh, no sense of building two trails to go to the same spot. So There's we no do other share way. trails and the ETV clubs welcome the snowmobiles in their trails because the snowmobiles pack the snow harder and they don't have to send out their groomers as often because their trail stays smoother longer. That's it. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. Exactly, exactly. And they get along, they get along good. Okay. Uh, w with no, hardly any issue. Good. Uh, this is great. Uh, about uh, United Club? United is a super club. Uh, it's, uh, they span, I think they have over 130 some kilometers mm. of trail. And United, what what's is unique with the clubs in Kent, United and, uh, and uh, Ridge Riders, is all, most of their trails are built in the woods. They're mm. w in the woods trail. They hardly uh, don't use any dirt roads or woods roads like most clubs in the province do. And this is unique because most people love to ride in those trails because on a woods road, you can go there with your vehicle, your that's truck, it. your car. That's it. But on an ETV, you'd like to be places where you can't go with your vehicle. Right. And uh, United and Ridge Riders offer those type of trails where you'd never make it with a truck or a That's vehicle. It. This, is, this is something interesting because um, this proves that New Brunswick off offers all kinds of possibilities as trail conditions, uh, difficulty levels or so. It's not all the same. It's, that's what you offer here. but. Elsewhere in the province, they offer another product, so exactly. wider roads, uh, uh, lumber roads, and all this stuff. So this, for the t for the tourist, this is interesting. It is, it is, and uh, we have uh, winter and summer trails, and uh, the tourists, when they come down, they're amazed from because in the summertime, when they do the trails, we cross a lot of rivers, little rivers, mm -hmm. brook streams, and beaver dams and stuff like that, and that creates opportunities for the tourists to stop, take a break, and when you stop at a beaver dam, I mean, it's picturesque, it's beautiful. That's it. But a beaver dam for the, the volunteers, it's an enemy because it damages the trails and you have to get there, do a more maintenance. But for the tourist, uh, we're used to see the beaver dams, but for the tourist, it's something that they discover for the first time. So that becomes an attraction. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, beavers do cause problems to uh, our trails in some places. Some places we have to tear down their uh, beaver dam as they build it, but other places where it's under control, mm. they make magnificent places You're to right. stop. Some of them, we see the dams about seven, eight feet high, so so this, oh, this it's amazing. It's, it, it's a wall. So, it so, is, so it is, and if we can keep our trails away from there, right. uh, we can enjoy those beaver dams. Right. Uh, are those, uh, is this a uh, uh, summer event or winter event? This would be held in the summertime, yes. The summertime, okay. Yeah. So uh, people can come here in summertime and come back in wintertime it's a whole different Absolutely. culture it's not the same thing at all Absolutely. Our trails are open 12 months a year. We do have to close them in the spring and fall, mm -hmm. in the wet season. But as soon as it dries up, then uh, we uh, reopen the trails. So it's pretty well year-round. The challenges for those two clubs, because we are still talking about the, uh, the, uh, the trail number 10 to make the interconnection of all the clubs in the province. Uh, what's their position here uh, regarding that? Uh, here we have a big problem. Uh, Ridge Riders is, is uh, uh, south of the Bucktooth River, and that's where we're, we stop because we can't legally cross any bridges. And we need to, to talk to uh, the, uh, the towns or uh, mm. cities to give us access to some of the bridges so we can that's cross it. those rivers and especially make it into their uh, towns and villages to use their uh, facilities like restaurants, gas stations, and motels and stuff. But uh, right now, today, uh, as, as we go north, Ridge Rider, we're blocked. We can't cross okay. that river. And going south, it's no problem because United is actually working to uh, tie with the Mud Runners, which is a Moncton club, and they're going to be tying, build a, another trail going towards Shadiac, which is the, uh, uh, wow. I forget their name, but anyway, the club in Shadiac. Uh, okay. Country Wheelers. Country Wheelers. Uh, Roger, we've had... You talked about sharing roads, uh, municipalities that have to uh, to to come in with uh, with the federation w with this industry. The government is jumping in also, step by step. Uh, they're being careful because people need to be uh, to be uh, f to get familiar with this new industry that is growing faster and faster. We have a perfect example here. Uh, United Club is sharing. Uh, using this this facility as as a clubhouse, 
uh, they use the roads, and this is a good sign, Roger. Absolutely, absolutely, and we and the government have to do more. They have to get really on board as to look at us as a r real tourist product because we are a tourist product. I've been saying for years, when you bring 10 snowmobiles to a restaurant, most of the time 10 people go in, sit down and eat. But if you bring 10 ATVs to that same restaurant, chances are 20 people are going going to yes. go in that restaurant and sit down and eat because most of us bring our uh, wives with us or uh, vice versa, the wives bring their husband <laughs> with them. <laughs> that, that's likely to see also. So what people need to understand that that, that tourism industry, uh, I in the government's mind, tourism is somebody that comes from outside the province. But ATV-wise, uh, it's, it's not the same culture because they travel really, really slower. There's probably the average of 40 kilometers per hour compared to a snowmobiler that rides r really faster. So this means that people are stopping more often and spend more money. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's not a big problem having an ATV on the road. You have farm tractors using the same roads. That's it. You have the motorcycles. Motorcycles are only, uh, you know, and an ATV is the size of a car. Now we have so ATV is the size of a car. And it's absolutely... Uh, necessary for us to use some of those trails or uh, those streets so we can get to our uh, main trails. Right, that's it. So Roger, as a president, uh, how do you see this region here to, uh, to attract tourists? We have a few minutes left to uh, convince them to come in this area also. We oh. want them to come all throughout New Brunswick, but this yes. is a, spe a special region also. Uh, in this region, we do have a motel here in Pokang. It's in the United uh, area. Uh, the Pokang Motel, okay. you can leave from the motel and hit the trail right from there. And, they, and it's a beautiful spot, Pokang, because they have the Pokang Marina there. And it's a, in, that in itself is a tourist attraction. And having access to lodging and facilities, this is something it, else. This Services. is what we need. This is what we need to pursue to, for, uh, to better our clubs and to better our product as so, an ETV yes. tourist attraction. So the people that are looking at the show need to know that it's possible to, for us to be or for the ETVs and quads to be on the same streets as you're traveling because uh, they respect the same, the same, the same rules, the same conditions, and, and the vehicle act, and it's it's all absolutely. Great. And all the ETVs need to to be plated. They have insurance. That's it. We're the same as a vehicle, actually. Right. Roger Degg, thanks for being with us for this show. Well. We'll see again oh, later absolutely. on in the series because uh, next week uh, we are inviting you also because next week we'll be in the Fredericton area. Nice places to visit over there also and we'll talk about all the clubs in the area, region number six. So come back and uh, see you next week. Welcome to Riding Tips with Jim. This week we're going to talk about your protective equipment. The nature of ATV riding demands that you wear protective clothing. Although complete protection is not possible, knowing what to wear and how to wear it can make you more comfortable when you ride and reduce the chance of injury in case of a spill. Never operate an ATV without an approved helmet, eye protection, boots, gloves, long pants, and a long sleeve shirt or jacket. Helmets. Your helmet is the most important piece of protective gear for safe riding. A helmet can prevent serious head injuries. Your helmet should fit snugly and it should be securely fastened. Full face helmets help protect your face as well as your head. Eye protection. You must be able to see clearly in order to ride safely. An object such as a rock, branch, or even a bug that hits you in the face can distract you. But if you are hit in the eyes, you can be blinded. Regular sunglasses do not provide protection on an ATV. A face shield or goggles will protect you. Clothing. Good gloves will prevent your hands from getting sore, tired, or cold, as well as offer protection in the event of a spill. Off-road style gloves, available at motorcycle dealerships, provide the best combination of protection and comfort. Over-the-ankle boots offer protection for feet, ankles, and legs. A long sleeve shirt or jersey and long pants are minimal requirements for rider protection. This has been Riding Tips with Jim. Keep the rubber side down. Thank you.